Hey everybody, welcome back. So in the last video, I had promised that the next video we would put the valve train together on this CBX engine. And uh, these are all the parts and pieces to the CBX valve train. It's pretty intimidating when you look at when you look at it in this form. And one of the things that I'm not even showing here, are the shims. So I've got a vat here full of shims, anywhere from 250 to 300 on the size. So uh, we'll get into the shims uh, when we start assembling the engine or the uh, valve train. So here we have the, the cam caps. We've got the uh, shim buckets, or Honda calls them valve lifters, but I call them a shim bucket. Uh, these are uh, little rubber, um, I don't know what you want, a good diverters or whatever, oil diverters that go into the head. These are the little rubber inserts that go into the cooling fins on the outside of the engine to cut down on the vibration. Here's our small and third cam chain. This is an oil supply. And then you have the cams and the, and the uh, timing chain gears. And then these are all the, uh, the head nuts here with their brass washers. So, and then we have some other miscellaneous uh, bolts and screws. So, the first thing you do, of course, is put the shim buckets in along with shims. Now, of course, I don't know what size shims I'm gonna need, so I'm just gonna put all the same size in there I'm going to put like 295s in there and then adjust them from there. So we'll get into the valve adjustment after we get everything assembled. As I mentioned in an earlier video, what I do with the some of the mating surfaces of like the camshafts and the crankshaft and so on, uh, I do the same thing on the... Uh, on the caps for the camshafts. So what I do on those is I'll take each one of the caps and I get a, a little bit of a Scotch-Brite and I just kind of clean the surface like that of any stains or oil buildup, sludge buildup or whatever. And then what I do is I'll take a paper towel with the semi-chrome polish and I put a little bit on there And they come out looking beautiful. Nice and smooth. You want a nice, smooth, shiny surface to cut down on the friction. So I do the same thing to the shim buckets. Now, Honda calls these valve lifters, but, you know, I call them shim buckets or whatever because the shim goes in there. But anyway, this is the way that they came out of the engine. As you can see, they're all stained. And, you know, from just wear and tear. 
and I just scotch brighted them and polished them with the semi-chrome and they're beautiful, like brand new. So you wanna make this surface really slick because they're, uh, they're moving up and down on the valve. So anyway, I, uh, so I scotch brite it and then polish it with the semi-chrome. So one thing you wanna have handy is your oil can. And you just start off by inserting the, the shim buckets. And I just load each hole up with the oil, throw some oil on the bucket. And then work it in there. If you feel a little resistance, then just go to a different location. Like this one had a hard time going into there. So I just moved it over. See, that's, that's a tight one there. And one thing I do is I always kind of make sure that the a uh, little notch on the bucket is facing me because then I can, it's easier to adjust the, uh, you know, to pull the shims in and out. See, now that one went in there really easily. You want them to, to move freely. Okay, so I have all the uh, shim buckets in there. And so then you put the shims in. And in my case, like I said, I'm just going to put all the same shim in there. So... Uh, then you just squirt a little drop of oil on the shim surface. And by the way, when you're putting the buckets in, you really don't want them to bind up. You don't want to force them in there. You want to be able to have them, you know, move around freely. Like, you know, you can see that one is real easy to move back and forth. So that's kind of what you want. You want them all to move freely because they're going up and down and you don't want them to be binding because that, that adds friction. So now I've had, I've got a handful of 280 shims here. I'm just going to start out with 280s because of the fact that this is a new head. And, you know, if you're taking your engine apart, I would just put the same shims back where they were before. So now I always put the the number down so that they don't so the number doesn't get worn off. And then you just slip them in there. Like the shim buckets, if the shims feel resistance going in, then just move over and put them somewhere else. You don't want to force them in.
So we are ready. I have all the nuts on there and we're ready to torque them down. So uh, if you look in the shop manual, the torque specs for that are. So you have the cylinder head on the uh, 10 on the 10 millimeter caps. It's uh, 23 to 25 pounds and on the 8 millimeter caps it's 14 to 15. So again I do everything right in the middle and you want to follow the uh, the shop manual as far as the sequence is concerned. And the sequence according to the shop manual is spelled out right here. And then again, there are the torque specs. So now I'm installing the oil pool plates. That's what Honda calls these little rubber diverters. And they go in the slots here along the top row up here. And what they do is they stop the oil from pooling up against the valve cover. And you have one here that's got a little dog leg in it. And that one goes in this middle one here because it's got a little dog leg there. Anyway, they're only along the top row here. you just set them in place. So the first step in installing the cams is you want to go around and make sure that all of your cam journals are dry or at least you know wipe some of the oil residue off of there that that may have gotten there when you were putting in the shims and the and the buckets. Um, and then you want to put some of the assembly lube on each one of the journals. Because you have to remember that the first time you start the engine up, there really is not that much oil up here at the top. So when you first start the engine, you want to have full lubrication on those cams otherwise you know they can damage the the journals as soon as you start it up so that's what the whole idea of the assembly lube is And then you want to be able, you want to be uh, also install or put the assembly or apply the assembly lube onto the cam journals and lobes as well. So, so the first thing you do when you install the cams is you have to install this main cam chain gear and the gear as you can see has two timing marks on it. There's one here and one here. So what you have to do with those timing marks is you have to line them up. The back one and the front one you have to line up with the with the edge of the head. So when it's in there properly those two timing marks have to line up perfectly with the angle of the head and that is of course you have your T mark lined up on your crankshaft for top dead center and it's really tricky to get the cam that first cam bolted up and keep the alignment and as you'll notice the holes the the screw the bolt holes one of them is down below 
where you can access it. So once you have those lined up, you have to rotate it around so you can put the second bolt in. So what I do is I just kind of hold the gear here and then I go ahead and line up the cam, put the bolt in at the bottom and then lower it down, get it all set and then put the top bolt in. And this is all with the chain attached. So like I said, it's not an easy task. So I'll get at it and I'll show you. So the first thing you do is you take your cam chain gear and you install the small or the short cam chain on the, on the small sprocket, just like that. Then you just lay it across the front of the engine. And again, you have to make sure your timing marks are lined up with the line of the head. And again, it's a little easy because you can tell that these bolt holes, bolt holes are also lined up vertically like that. Then you take your main cam chain again, make sure it's hooked up to the sprocket by turning the engine, making sure that it turns. Probably better to put the small sprocket on after you've got the sprocket over the main cam chain. And again, it's tricky. You have to try it a couple different times. So I've got it lined up perfectly, just like that. My two marks are lined up. My bolt holes are straight, vertical, like that. Then put your small one on. Then you take your cam and make sure your number six lobes, number six cylinder exhaust lobes are pointing towards the spark plugs. Then you start the top bolt and sometimes, you know, like this has a new cam chain on it. So it's really, really hard to get this thing to line up. So what you almost have to do is you almost have to get the cam into the sprocket and then pry it up, push the cam down, which is what I'm doing. I'm pushing it down in place. And then just put the bolt in. Don't tighten it. You just want it in there to hold the sprocket in place. And again, just make sure you're not cross-threading it because, you know, I'm holding it under pressure at this point. And it's turning real easily. But you don't tighten it. You just kind of leave it a little on the loose side. And then you have to install your number six and number four K 
cam caps. Okay, so I have the number four cap or number four cylinder cap installed to hold the cam, the cam down. And then you do your number six cap or actually it's cap number eight. And by the way, when you install these caps, you put the arrow pointing towards the front of the engine like that. And you make sure that the cap is seated all the way down before you tighten it. And again, whenever you turn any of these bolts, do it by hand first, because that way you'll know that the threads are in good shape. And again, you just want to snug them, and that's it. Then you want to recheck to make sure your timing marks still line up. Then you rotate the engine 360 degrees. So you can put the other bolt in. Then you turn the engine 360 degrees again and line up the T and then make sure that your number six cylinder lobes are pointing towards the spark plug. Another way to tell that you've got everything timed properly, again, you look at your timing marks here lining up with the head. You look at the bolt lined up vertically with the head and then here you've got two notches on the end of the cam and and they line up with the surface of the head and if all those are in place then you know you've got your timing chain timing or your valve timing correct very important to make sure all those are lined up properly one tooth off and you have to do it all over again. So now as soon as you have that done, then put the assembly lube on the cam lobes. Because you're going to be turning the engine a number of times right now while you're putting all this together. So then you install the intake side of the right hand cam and you install the other sprocket to it and you line up the timing marks the same way you did on this one over here. And then uh, so those line up with the head and then the bolts are vertical and the end of the camshaft notches line up and all of this with the T mark lined up and then uh, these lobes here on the inti intake side of the number six cylinder those lobes point towards the spark plug so the the exhaust lobes point towards the spark plug and the intake lobes point towards the spark plug and one thing too that I wanted to note was, okay, once you get that located, then you loosely install these two caps, number 14 and number 16. They're just loose. Then if you'll notice that all the cams have this, have this uh, 
ridge on them that goes into a slot in the head. And that cam cap has a slot in it which lines up with that. And the reason you want to, loo you want to keep these loose is because that slot actually locates the cam exactly where it should be back and forth. So you wanna leave those loose so that when you put this on, it positions the cam properly. And that's true with all four cams. So uh, then you go ahead and torque these down to 10 pounds each, do it in a cross pattern. And uh, that's it. So I'm gonna go ahead and torque these down. Okay, so now that I've got the, the right side exhaust and intake cams installed. And by the way, when you, when I talked about lining up the timing marks on the sprockets, again, you know, you line up those dimples on the sprocket with the engine case and you line up those dimples with the engine case. Now, if you come down and you look at those marks like that, they're not going to be 100% absolutely in line with the engine case, but they're going to be very close. That's why I always make sure that the bolts are vertically lined up and also the cam joints are vertically lined up like that. And also, in the case of the right-hand side cam, that your number six intake and exhaust lobes are pointing towards the spark plug. So that's really the most important part. And then also, you want to line up the notches on the cams as closely as possible to the to the engine case. So those are really the things to look for. The dimples are also important, but a lot of times they're off just very, ever so slightly. So don't get too uh, concerned about that. You know, all of these things combined that line up are really what's important. And also, you know, your, your timing mark down here. So anyway, now that I've got those two cams installed, this is a very, very important step when you install the right side or the left side uh, intake and exhaust cams. What you have to do, and this is a really important thing, you have to rotate the engine 360 degrees and then line and then realign the T mark again. So you re you turn it 360 degrees, bring it back to the T. Now you'll notice that your cam lobes on number one or number six cylinder are pointing towards the outside of the engine. So then you install your cams on the left side of the engine with the number one lobes pointing towards the spark plugs. Okay, so here I'm going to install the two cams again with the lobes pointing towards the spark plug. So the first thing you do is you install your cam joints in the slots in the sprockets.
and install the cams again with the lobes pointing towards the spark plugs. Then once all your cam or all your caps are installed, then you install the oil line and the other uh, guide rails for the uh, cam chain. And this bolt again is very short and just be careful not to drop it down inside the engine. Then once that is done, go ahead and torque down your, your uh, bolts that you just installed to 10 pounds. So then once you have everything tightened down and uh, torqued to specs, then you rotate the engine another 360 degrees and recheck all of your timing marks. So I've got it on T, I've rotated 360, so now my number six lobes are pointing towards the, car, uh, the spark plugs and my number one lobes are pointing out, out away from the spark plugs. And my bolts are lined up vertically. My timing marks on the sprockets are lined up roughly with the uh, head line, the line of the head. And then my uh, notches on the cams are lined up relatively horizontal on both sides. So once you have all of that lined up and set in place, then we're ready to adjust the valves. And I will be doing that on my next video. And uh, again, thank you for watching. And, and again, this was an edited uh, version of this same video that I had released a few days ago, but uh, I had made an error in installing the cams. So I've redone this video. This is the edited video. So if you've downloaded that other video, please delete it and uh, download this one instead. So again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate the support. Uh, sub uh, be sure to hit the subscribe and then the bell to get uh, post notifications and like and share and please send constructive comments. I I love the uh, constructive comments. It helps everyone, including myself. So uh, again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one when I adjust the valves then.